Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Shappy, and Faye are the worst thing ever. But yeah, Davy out. <sighs> Fine, for the sake of ad revenue, I won't end this video after six seconds. But it's not because I like you or anything, stupid. So, Faye is a blanket term used to describe all the sprites, spriggan, satyrs, and nymphs that have been dreamt up in folklore or found in the center of an ecstasy pill. These cutesy little blights on society make a name for themselves as tricksters, con artists, and thieves, often going out and stealing babies, haunting forests, and coercing people who can't help themselves into making a deal that they don't know enough about. Honestly, their modus operandi is consistent with that of devils, except that Faye get a pass on it because people say that their intentions are all in good fun. I'm sure that devils find their job enjoyable too, but what do I now, the wonderful legend of the Fae found its origins in the Feywild, a magical realm that parallels the material plane in both geography and structure, but changing the looks heavily to remind you that you are in fact in another plane of existence. The Feywild reminds you of home, but much more beautiful, luring you into a false sense of security like your mother when she says you're not in trouble, only to strike out with any of the nasty things that inhabit it. Honestly, the Feywild is the perfect representation of Fae kind as a whole, as it throws conventional rules out the window and makes up new ones of its own. There's a sort of emotion that goes into the architecture of the Feywild, like an artist hopped up on sugar, like why have a basic mountain on this range when it could instead be a dazzlingly beautiful volcano with lava turned into red crystal glass? Or, more sinisterly, what if a dark brown marsh became a toxic bog filled with twisted brambles and spikes pulling you in and sinking you down into its depths? What if the ruins of an old castle were instead a brilliant palace owned by a malevolent queen with a taste for tarts and a head for beheading? It's almost unfair how strong the expression of emotion is compared to the material plane. Everything in the Feywild is a work of art. And and in my experience, that art teeters on the edge of both terror and vanity. And I say vanity because the Fae themselves don't actually have any kind of purpose, they exist just to exist, and when they're bored of existing, they go and pick on all the other things that exist. All those bad comments you get on the internet, those are Fae. All those downvotes, Fae. Every time you can't find your car keys, even though you know that you left it just right there, it's Fae. It's always Fae. They go out into the world to wreak havoc, often in the form of deals made with mortals that don't know enough not to trust the Fae, and always with a hidden catch so that they can steal all your baseball cards and then blame you for not reading the fine print. For example, to give you a tale of how the Fae operate, I once went out in search of a young child whose father had lost him during the night, and his trail led me to a Fae named Tubit that had disguised himself as a benevolent fairy that would take the child to meet new friends in the Fae Wild. It seemed that the child had signed a contract, and while obviously the signature of someone so young couldn't be binding in the normal world, the Fae had no such compulsions, and I had to pay an overwhelming amount of gold just to buy him out of his indentured servitude without a fuss. In another story, my friends and I had just been saved from death by the Fae. Yes, embarrassing, I know. And in Fae society, if you accept a favor from someone, then you are expected to either do a favor for them that they would accept, or give a gift that they would accept. Myself and most of my friends had to give up powerful items that would be enough to sate the voracious attitude of the Fae, but one of my compatriots decided to be sneaky. He said, in the most simple terms, I give you my thanks. And then he turned and left. The Fae Lord accepted it, and so this dude got to leave without losing anything of importance while all of us had to get rid of cool magic items. Or so he thought. Later on, when he was given a ration to eat for the night, he tried to say something, but found his tongue glued to the top of his mouth for just that moment. You see, he had given the Fae Lord his thanks, and so the Fae Lord took them. All of them. He could never again give thanks to anyone, as they were no longer his to give. And when Fae aren't out making nuisances of themselves to the real world, they tend to spend a lot of time waging interpersonal political mind games in one of two Fae courts. These courts are the closest thing that Fae have to an actual society, or governmental bodies, and they are comprised of the Summer Court, which is ruled by their Queen Titania, and lords over the Seely Fae, and the Gloaming Court, which rules the Unseely Fae, and is led by the Queen of Air and Darkness. Now, these courts don't usually help Fae kind, and not all fae are beholden to them, like hags who tend to do their own thing, or more freedom-esque fae that would rather not be beholden to some sort of rigid structure. And instead of helping their people, because that would make them less terrible, these courts instead spend their hours playing games, and like most other games played on a court, the rulings never make sense and the numbers don't matter. Much like the enigmatic nature of the Feywild itself, the Seelie and Unseelie courts seem to always be at odds with the very idea of what it is they're at odds about. Are they enemies? Sometimes. Sometimes they're just neutral states, and sometimes one invites the other over for lunch. Is one good and the other evil? Well, the Seelie Court tends to be more gooder, and the Unseelie Court is positively unsightly, but they are both Fae, so the answer to that is no, it's all terrible. The only thing that seems to be consistent about the Fae Courts is that underneath their queens, they are ruled by various Arch Fae, the very same that imbue warlocks with their powers. And when they're done twirling their mustaches, the Fae slip back into the Fae Wild by using sections of the world where the visual likeness between it and the material realm is so similar that 
reality actually combines the two because it can no longer tell which is supposed to be which. And that's why you shouldn't walk alone in the forest at night, lest you be spirited away and replaced with a changeling. Wait, what's that? Changeling aren't Fae in 5e? What the fuck? Anyways, if the Fae do capture you, woohoo boy, are you in a world of bad. Fae are territorial, stingy, selfish little creatures, and it takes a lot to get them to give something up. And even if you do get free, time works differently in the Feywild. You could be gone for five minutes only to find out that five decades have gone by without you. You could be stuck in the Feywild for years and years, and then get back home to realize that no time has passed in the normal world at all. Hell, on rare occasions, you might even find yourself going back in time. And I am not going into the horrors of the paradoxical nature of time travel. But the worst part of all that or maybe the best, if you think about it, is that after all the time that you spend in the Feywild, scraping your way through the Fey and completing the mighty adventure that you were sworn to do, or just escaping because Fey are terrible, there is a chance that, unless you happen to have Fey blood in you like an elf, all of those memories of the time that you spent in the Feywild could just disappear as soon as you walk out of it. No memory of the wrongs dealt upon you, or the emotional moments you had while trekking through that beautiful, gorgeous hellscape, nothing. It's all gone. I don't know why I hate the Fae so much. But as far as memory is concerned, all it takes to hate the Fae forever is one bad dream. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell to keep the Fae away, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can afford to pay off my debt to the Archfey of YouTube. But yeah, Davy out.